Well, I'm glad you came to church this morning. Amen. You guys doing all right? Praise the Lord. Y'all sound. Y'all. I'm gonna ask you again. Y'all doing all right, church? Yes. Sir. Amen. Come on. Don't leave me by myself. Praise the Lord. I want to jump right into the word this morning. Um, and we'll do announcements and everything afterwards. But uh, last week I started a series on the spirit of gratitude because this is. Uh, we're dealing with the Christmas spirit, and if, if there's anything that has to do with Christmas, it's it's gratitude. It's it's what God did by sending His Son Jesus Christ on the earth to, with a purpose, with a passion, with a, a, a plan, and the purpose was for for Christ to come and be born, yet just to die for our sins. So today I want to preach a message. I'm entitled. True gratitude never forgets. True gratitude never forgets. How many have not forget, forgotten what the Lord has done for you? How many have not forgotten? Come on, lift your hand if you haven't forgotten. Amen. Don't never forget what God has done for you. Don't never forget what He's what He's doing for you now. Don't never forget what He's done in the past. What I found out in my life is that a lot of people, a lot of times, our current situation shifts our perspective. To just focus on the now, we forget about the then, what God did back then, and so we we limit God to what He can do in our lives by uh, what we're going through right now, and what you're going through right now may be the toughest thing you've ever faced in your life. What you're going through right now may be discouraging. What you're going through my, right now may may have you feeling sad or discouraged or or. or going through a struggle, but you have to really be able as a Christian, as a child of God, to reach back into your past, to look back into your past and see what God has done in your life. Because God has done some awesome things in you. God has saved you. God has taken you off the path. Now maybe you face some road uh, some roadblocks along the way and some 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 things failed and some some relationships fell apart and, and, and some some people left you or broke your heart or, 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 or a situation left you uh, confused. But you have to be able to look back and not forget and be thankful for what God has already done in your life. You understand that? I used to, everybody knows when I get saved, I talked about it all the time, June 23rd, 1991. I, I know that date. Like the, how many remember the day you gave your heart to Jesus? You can quote the day. Amen. I can tell you where I was, I can tell you what time of day it was, I can tell you what, what time the service started, I can tell you uh, exactly what happened the day I got saved, because I remember that day, because it's the day my life changed, and I haven't forgotten what God has done for me. Now, since June 23rd, 1991, that's a long time ago, to this day, I've been through some stuff, are you hearing me, I've been through some tough things. Pastor, did you ever want to give up on God? Yeah, I've, I've been through that, I've been times where I wanted to walk away, I wanted to give up on, 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 on just walking away from God. And, I, and, and I, I've been mad. Have you ever been mad at God, disappointed? You know, are, are, are you, everybody here is a perfect Christian. Amen. Y'all pray for me. Uh, I've been through those things. And I know all of y'all guys are perfect. But let me just share my struggles. But I've been through some times where I got mad at God. God, why'd you let that happen? God, why did this happen? Why did you have to allow this? God, why did this happen? Why did it go this way? I've been upset at God before. I've been disappointed. And, but I've never forgotten what God has done for me. And so that's what keeps me grounded. I have to look back and I, and I look around me and I say, man, if it wasn't for God that did this in my life, man, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be serving God. I wouldn't be in a, in a good place I am. So I have to thank God. See, true gratitude never forgets what God has done because what God has done in your life is just as important as what he's doing in your life. And it is just as important as what he's going to do in your life. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and what he did yesterday, he can do today. What he does today, he can do tomorrow. It's the same God. God does not change. Isn't that good news? God doesn't change. He loves you. He keeps loving you. He keeps walking you through trials and through temptations. But true gratitude never forgets. I'm going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm, trying, I'm going to try to uh, get through this this morning. I want you to uh, walk with me through Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're going to read the whole chapter here, but it's only about 20 verses. And I'll, I'll try to read it 
uh, quickly, we're going to put it on the screen here. It says, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. Let me make sure we're on the right. Uh, is this a new King James? Yeah. Okay. I think I'll probably use the NIV. Let's do this. is fine. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. Next scripture. It's moving slow. Praise the Lord. And you shall remember. Everybody say remember. And you shall remember the Lord. Remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years to the wilderness to humble you and to test you to, to know that was in your heart, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And so he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now God's going through a little, hit, the word's going through a little history lesson here. It says your garments did not wear out. How, how many understand what, what, what the scripture is about? He's talking about the journey of the Israelites with Moses through the, uh, uh, through the wilderness. He said your garments did not wear out on you. Now think about that, ladies. Your garments did not wear. What does that mean? That means nobody got a new dress. Because your husband said, why you need a new one? That was still good. Never mind. That's good news for us men, praise the Lord. That camel skin still is good on you, girl. I don't know what they were back then. <laughs> your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. What are you talking about? You need some new. What kind of shoes are girls in? I don't know. Anyway. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Next scripture. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways and fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land that of brooks, of water, and of fountains, springs that flow out of valleys and hills. And a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, and a land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without uh, scarcity, in, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, out of those hills you can dig copper. Now watch, he's just telling how blessed, uh, how blessed you're going to be. He's saying you're going to be this blessed and that blessed. You're, you're going to uh, have all this. Now watch this part. He says, and when you have eaten and are full, another word there that I have in my scripture, that I have in my Bible, that, I want, that the word I want to use is the word satisfied. We're going to use both those words. And when you are full, or and when you are satisfied, Bless, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Everybody say satisfied. satisfied. Everybody say full. full. Beware that you do not forget. Watch this. Now you just saw where he talked about, he said you went through all of this. And you, your, your, your shoes didn't wear out. Your, your garment didn't wear out. I brought you through this, all this trouble, all this Struggle, all these things you went through in your life. I brought you through all that. And then he tells them, and now I blessed you. Now you're you're in a good land. Now you're you're you you can dig out the uh, copper out of the mountains. Now you have you're in abundance, you're blessed. He goes, now you're blessed. And he says, and when you are have been full, when your life is full, when you're satisfied, he said, Don't what? Don't forget. Beware, here's the warning, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Least when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwelt in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, 
when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through the, the great and terrible wilderness, wilderness in which fiery serpents and scorpions and, and thirsty land where there is no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Now, there's a warning here. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get well, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Is that the last one? I think it is. So, you got one more? Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, if you forget and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I will testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. One more. And as the nations which the Lord destroys before you, you shall perish because you will not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. I'm going to stop right there. I want to start off by saying this morning... And I want you to hear when I say this. Never get to a place where you become truly satisfied. Are y'all hearing me this morning? I'm getting a little warm. Can you help me out? I, never get to a place where you are truly satisfied. Now I want you to understand that may sound like, well, we're all supposed to be satisfied. But I want you to hear what I'm, I'm explaining here. I know that it may sound greedy. Uh, to not get to a place where you're satisfied, but being satisfied is a dangerous place to be in your life. Being satisfied. How many, how many have ever been satisfied? Good, I'm glad you're not satisfied. If you're satisfied, don't settle in, in, satisfa in your satisfaction because life changes. Hello? Have you ever got to a place where life was good and then something happened? And it shifted your life. Hello? That's why you shouldn't ever get satisfied. Because life can change and drop of a hat. See, it may sound greedy not to be satisfied, but being satisfied, uh, being satisfied is a dangerous place to be. Most people who are satisfied settle where they are. Satisfied people are not risk takers. Satisfied people are not people of faith. Satisfied people stop moving forward. You know why? Because they believe that where they are is the best, the best place they've ever been, and it's the best place they'll ever be. They're satisfied, so they stop moving. They stop stepping out in faith. They stop doing, being obedient to God. They stop. They, they become settled. They just want to sit on the couch because life is good. Let's just sit right here, baby. Sit down. Let's sit down and enjoy the flat screen. We're set. Life is good. Our kids are good. We got a house. We're, we're satisfied. We're good. And so you become settled in your life. But satisfied people are not people of faith. Satisfaction is a faithless and visionless way to live. I'll say it again. Satisfaction is a faithless and visionless way to live. The Hebrew root for satisfied is this. Hebrew word for satisfied means this. To feel satisfaction. To have plenty of. To be fulfilled. To have one's feel. To have in excess. That's what the Hebrew word for satisfied means. Now the dictionary says this about being satisfied, the Western Dictionary. It says, if you are satisfied with something, you're pleased with it because it's what you wanted. Have you ever got something you wanted and then not soon after, not soon long after that, it wasn't what you expected it to be? Or you got what you wanted and then pretty soon after that, what you, what you desired, what you wanted so bad and you thought would fulfill you no longer fulfills you anymore? Hello? So it says, if you're satisfied with something, you are pleased with it because it's what you wanted. If you're sat, this is a dictionary. It says, if you're satisfied, you're content, and you don't need any more, anything more. You're overjoyed, and, 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 but you're not complaining either. 
See, the Israelites were blessed people. God had been very good to them. In verses 15 and 16, he explains that. Later on, God will bless them by giving them nice places to stay in. He would, the word would multiply, the Bible says they, they, that God multiplied their wealth and their flocks and with silver and gold. They would eat all that God would give them and they would become full. They were satisfied. Their stomach, spiritually speaking, were bulging out of all the blessings of God. And, and, and you can, and I can look and say that that's wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful to be in a place where you're satisfied. Isn't it? But, but isn't that just like God to bless us or bless his people with so much? See, God does want to bless you. God wants to bless you, but he doesn't desire that you become settled in a satisfied life. Being settled is not good. Being settled in a satisfied life. Saying, this is where I'm going to be and I think this is great and I'll just stay right here. See, the Lord knew, the Lord knew that there was also a danger in receiving so many blessings. Read the scripture. That's why he warns them. When you get blessed, don't forget. Because true, sad, true gratitude never forgets. True gratitude never forgets what God has done, and true gratitude never forgets how, long, how far you've come. True gratitude every day will look up and say, thank you, God, because it wasn't for me, it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be standing right here right now. True gratitude gives back because you understand that everything you have doesn't even belong to you. It's from God. And if God gave it to you once, He can give it to you again. Are y'all with me this morning? See, he knew that, God knew that there would be a tendency for them to forget him. And now that they were so blessed, that they, were, they would have the tendency to think that they didn't need God. Now, for the things, because things were going so well for them. God knows that when people are blessed, they, they have a tendency to forget who it was that enabled them to gather or get their blessings. They have a tendency to enjoy the blessing and forget the blesser. But true gratitude never forgets. True gratitude. See, that's what the Christmas of uh, the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of Christmas, is about gratitude. When you when you're really grateful, you don't need to be reminded about how good is, God has been to you. You don't have to be reminded to give back. You don't have to be reminded why you should be faithful to God. Why? Because you're truly grateful and true gratitude never forgets. I want you to just take a few moments to look at yourself. And you may realize, and you, and you, you need to realize that you are truly are a blessed people. You truly are blessed. Can somebody just say that with me and say, I'm blessed? You're blessed. You really are blessed. We realize that how blessed we are. See, the fact that we're here today is an indication that we're blessed. What I'm afraid of is that we become so blessed that we have become satisfied and forgotten God. We become so satisfied that we've forgotten the thing that God has put in us. See, you have some things in you that you have laid down in your life because satisfaction has taken over. We've forgotten that it is God who's blessed us. And now that we're so full of his blessing, he wants us, we, we, we become quiet. You might say, but pastor, that's not me, pastor. I, I know this message is for me. It's, it's for, you know, the brother and sister down the road. But I want you to consider some things for a moment. You see, there used to be a time where we hungered for the things of God. We really hungered for his presence. We really hunger to be more like him, but now we're in a place where we're satisfied. Satisfaction will stop you from seeking after more because you're satisfied. Are you with me? Have you ever gone to a buffet? Come on. I don't like going to buffets. I used to love going to buffets. I don't like going to them anymore. But I used to love going to buffets. I used to love going to Chinese buffets. Can we talk about food for a moment? I feel the Holy Ghost. I like buffets. You know when you first go in the buffet, it's like, mm, you get that plate, right? They give you the plate. Even, how many go to the buffet line before you even go to the table? You're supposed to get your plate, go to the table, 
pull out your chair, make sure you've got your table. But no, most of us, I, I never, I skip the table. I said, some, don't get a table, I'm going straight to the buffet line. Right? right? And then you go on there cutting that ham, they're cutting that right. When you first get to the buffet line, what happens? Your mouth starts watering, you go, oh man, I want to try that, and I want to try a little of that, huh? I want to try that. Y'all don't like buffets? Okay, I know, me neither, but that's why I used to like buffets. Just play along with me. So you go to the buffet, you go, oh, I want to try that, I want to try it. You rush around, give me, give me some of that. Give me. And you're hungry for everything that's here. You want everything. You come back with that big plate loaded. Big, your plate's just flowing. You come back and you eat. And what happens after you go back once, and maybe twice, and some of you really push it, go like three times, then you go back and you know, the dessert. I mean, you're coming. And then by the time you know it, you're sitting at the table, and now you're satisfied. You're full. You, you, you have filled every guilty pleasure in you. And now you're sitting at the table, but guess what? The, the buffet that's laid out is still full. There's still more to gather. But you're so satisfied that you you remain at the table because why? I don't want no more. I don't need no more because I'm satisfied. Are you hearing me? And that's the way God is. God has a buffet of blessing. A buffet of things for you to achieve in your life. But what we have done is we have ran to the buffet and we have shoved ourselves so full that now we're sitting back and we're satisfied. You know one thing I learned about losing weight when I got on my weight loss journey? You know one thing I learned? The one thing that the trainer and nutritionist told us was you have to eat every three hours. Every three hours. But you're only going to eat this much. And you, the food's like small, right? Y'all you, you know what I'm talking about? Food's small. And I was like, man, that's not enough food. Every three, that's not enough. Because I was used to, I realized I had to eat. And you know what happened? I, after the first, second day, I called him and said, man, this is, this is too much food. I went from my eyes telling me it was enough to my body telling me it's too much. Because I would eat a little bit of food. And then I'd feel all right. Three hours later, I would have to eat again. Three hours later, I'd have to eat again. By the time I went from eating maybe two or three big meals a day to seven meals a day every three hours, small, small, small. It was just way too much food for me. But I realized that eating that much in moderation, my body never got full, but I was always satisfied. Satisfaction is never meant, you're never meant to settle. Satisfaction in God is meant to sustain you to move forward to greater things. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? God satisfies you not to keep you where you are, but God satisfies you to, keep, to get you to move forward to the greater things. Because God is never done. Are y'all with me this morning? You see... I, I, can I make a confession? Really confession? I am not satisfied. You know why? Because I know that God still has more for me to do. God still has more for me to have. God still has more for me to conquer. The key to serving God is never settling. God always has more. That's why Ephesians 3.20 says this. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly above, abundantly above all, that we can ask for things according to the power that works in us. He has more, but you can't forget what he's already done. True gratitude never forgets. It is difficult to go after God for more when you've forgotten what he's already done. Why would God want to why would God want to bless somebody who, had, who, who stopped being thankful for what he's already done? It's, it's, how many like, you know, we, we like giving gifts, right? We all, everybody likes, some people love giving gifts. I talked about this last week. If you, you love giving gifts to people, when you give a gift to somebody, how many like to see them use that gift? I like giving them a gift and then you go, you see them, hey man, I still got that gift over here. 
Robert gave me a, a knife. Here's I still got that knife. I still use it. Keep it in my back pocket. I put it on my belt. Little why? It's a gift that I just I, I like the gift. But what if somebody gave you a gift and they never? What if you gave somebody a gift and they never used it? If you went home, you gave them a sweater and that sweater they never wore, it's still hanging in the closet. Husbands, you buy your wife something, it's just there. You're like, I never, I, I gave my wife a, a bracelet the day we got married. I remind her about that bracelet. Baby, where's the bracelet I gave you? I got it. <laughs> it's put up. I wear it. See? I wear it in special occasions. I'm like, I bought you that gift when we got married. It, it's, it's so special. <laughs> I need a special occasion. I'm like, baby, you're a special occasion. Oh. I just got brownie point. You should wear that all the time. I bought it for you. I want you wearing it. I want her every day to tell me how, how, how grateful she is for that gift. That's the way I am with gifts. I give her something, I remind her for days. Babe, so you like that gift I gave her? I love it, honey. I don't like buying her flowers. Tell her, I don't buy her flowers no more. You know why I don't like flowers? She, she says, I don't want flowers. I don't like flowers. To me, a flowers are a waste of money. You know why? Because they die. I buy a flower, she puts, she, this is the way flowers are. Oh, they think you a flower. Ooh, they're so pretty. And then you walk away. That's it. She forgets about her flowers. They die. Uh, I, why do I want to spend sixty, seventy dollars? That the flowers are expensive. On rose, yeah, because she, and that's what she tells me, typical wife. Why do I want to buy you? She goes because I like them. I'd rather spend sixty dollars on something she's gonna keep using, right? And she's gonna remind me all the time how grateful she is for what I bought. Gratitude never forgets. How many are, when you're truly grateful to God, you're always saying, God, I thank you, Father, for what you've done in my life. Let me tell you something. Problems, issues, struggles should never cause you to stop being gra grateful for what God has already done. As a matter of fact, when a problem hits your life, yet that's the first thing you ought to think is if God did that, did a miracle in my life before, he can do it again in my life now. Gratitude never forgets. Well, watch verse 10. Watch real quick. When you have eaten and are satisfied, in other words, when you have eaten and are satisfied, to be satisfied is a dangerous thing. It's a good thing, but then it's not a good thing. It's a bad, satisfaction is a bad place to stay. It's not a bad place to, it's not a bad thing to, thing to experience. It's okay to experience satisfaction, but don't settle in satisfaction. Are you hearing me? Because what satisfies you now will not satisfy you later. It's called growth. Hello? That's why in marriage, you gotta keep trying, keep falling in love over, keep, keep trying. Why? Because it's all good in the beginning, but if you don't continue to try, what used to satisfy, what used to satisfy you won't satisfy you. What you used to be in love with, now you've gotten used to. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. When you have eaten and are satisfied, verse 10. In other words, when you have seen God provide for you, when you have tasted and seen the Lord has been good, when you have saw God pull you out of the situation and protected you, when God came through to you and stepped in and took care of you, when you have eaten and have been satisfied, watch this, praise the Lord your God for the good he has given you. That's basic stuff. Grateful people are thankful people. Grateful people are giving people. Grateful people are worshipers. Grateful people come to God's house and give thanks. Grateful people are givers. Grateful people are tithers. Why? Because great gratitude never forgets. You all with me? Watch this. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Now there's a difference between being satisfied and being filled. Being satisfied and being filled. Being satisfied is dangerous because that's when 
when you when you're satisfied, you stop seeking the fullness of God because you believe that you've reached the place that God has already filled you with everything He has to give you, and that's not necessarily true. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise God for you for for, for your God as for the good that God has done in you. In other words. Praise God when you're satisfied, but don't just stay there because God has more for you. He says this, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let me say that again. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You can be satisfied and still be hungry. Are you hearing me? That's what I learned. You can be satisfied and still be hungry. Going back to weight loss, I learned this. Satisfied doesn't mean you're not hungry anymore. The trainer says, eat until you feel the food. When you feel the food, you realize, because it's up here, you, we're not meant to eat until we're full. I was taught, you eat, every time you eat, oh, you're low, oh, 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 oh. Have you ever eaten so much you, you hated it? Right, oh my God, I hate this. I'll never eat like this again. You're lying, I'm doing for dinner. We do it every time. But they said that's a cultural thing. It's a mental thing. You're supposed to eat and then you're satisfied. It doesn't mean you're not. It means I, I eat, but I can eat some more. But I'm satisfied, so I'm going to stop. Why? Because my body has received what it needed. Gluttony is when you eat more than what you need. But when you're satisfied, your body does what it needs to do in order to grow and become what it needs to become. Are y'all hearing me? Same thing with God. See, I came by to tell you this morning that you've been satisfied for too long. You, 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 you settled in being satisfied and you've mistaken satisfaction with fullness. Just because you're satisfied where you are does not mean you have reached the pinnacle of what God has for you. Say this with me. Lift one hand and say, God wants to fill me. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God doesn't just want to fill you. God says he wants you to be overfilled. My cup runneth over. There's nothing about God that stops at being full. Every indication in God's word that says, I will fill over. I will give you abundantly beyond, above what you can even ask or think. We have made a mistake and we have limited God by simply being satisfied. Are you with me this morning? Being satisfied does not mean you're at the place God has you, wants you to be. That you have reached the place where you're done. Now watch this. Here's the caution. And when you've eaten and satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the land he's given you. But be careful you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing, his, failing to observe his commandments. See, people who are satisfied forget what God has done. And we begin to live in disobedience. Nothing irks me more as a pastor. As a Christian. I see it all the time as a pastor. People come into the house of God. Broken. Needy. Needing God to turn their situation around. Needing God to turn their marriage around. Turn their life around. Turn their, some, they come crying. Pastor, help me. Pray for me. They start going to come to church. Be faithful, man. They start coming to church. It doesn't take long. Week, two weeks, three weeks, their life starts to change. They come, Pastor, God did this and God, and, and, and they won't come last. They say, Praise God, look at that testimony. It doesn't take long. Once they've received everything they were asking God for, they're gone. And I call them, text them, hey, bro. I said, Oh, yeah, I've been, I've been busy, man. Oh, I've been doing. What happened? They came empty. God satisfied them and they settled in that satisfaction because they got what they wanted and they left. But what they failed to realize is that God doesn't just want to satisfy you. He wants to fill you. 
Matter of fact, let me, let, me, let me go even further. God doesn't just want to fill you. He wants to overfill your life. We should not be living in a satisfied or even a filled life. We should be living in the overflowing presence and provision of God. Do you understand that? You should be living in the overflow. And what overflows for God. We have come to a place in our lives, many of us, where we lose our gratitude for what God has done because we're satisfied in what we're doing. Understand this. It's, you cannot, I, I know i got to wrap this up, but listen. You, you have to, I really question someone's commitment to God when they become settled in satisfaction. Because I'm going to tell you this. You cannot serve God and God simply stop doing things in your life once you become satisfied. A person can live in satisfaction when they're doing it themselves. That's why, it's, look at the scripture. Look at the Bible. He says this, you may, verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power, my strength, the strength of my hands has provided this wealth for me. I've done it. I'm satisfied because look at what I have done. That's when they become disobedient. That's when God says, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Remember that the Lord your God, it is He who gives you the ability. Yeah, you may have done it, but it's God who gives you the ability to do it. When you become satisfied, that means you're doing it on your own. It's when you get to a place. See, I've learned this about serving God. That when you're truly serving God and you're worshiping Him and you're seeking Him, you'll always want more. You're never satisfied. Are you hearing me? What do you mean, Pastor? I'm always going to be in a place in a place where I'm, not, I'm never going to be satisfied. No, no. Why would you ever want to be satisfied? Why would you ever want to serve a God <laughs> that you could get to a place and go, oh, there's no more God can do for me. I'm satisfied. My life is complete. My life's complete. God compared. That's why the scripture compares our relationship with God to the bride, to the groom. God, the greatest picture of salvation is the, the covenant of God is the covenant of marriage. That's the greatest parallel picture. Parallel. Because just like you should always chase your spouse to satisfy them, to, to, to love on them and to feel them, that's how God says you should always chase me. Because honey, I've only been, I'm even married 20, I'm 20, 30, 40, 10, like, I won't even marry three years. And in three years, I've already learned this. When I first, when I first met my wife and I fell in love, when I fell in love, y'all, I may remember being in love. Some of you say, I'm in love now, child. When I first met my wife, I was like, oh, I got to marry her. I fell in love, boy. Woo! Honey, uh. can, I, can I confess something? We got in a big old fight on our honeymoon. Remember that, baby? Baby, remember that? Because that watch right there. Oh, you're wearing it? That's gratitude, honey. You like your watch? You like it? God, thank you, baby. We got in a big We got in a fight. We got in a fight. We, were <laughs> we were on a cruise. We got in so bad a fight. <laughs> we were, was it Cayman Islands? We were in the Cayman Islands on a cruise. 
She poured it on the boat. She, I couldn't, uh, we got a fight, we kind of went separate ways. And I was like, get this, I'm going back to the boat. And I was standing in line for the boat, and then in my heart I was worried. First, no, first I was worried because I didn't know where she was. We kind of was arguing. I was like, where's she at? I said, man, what if she don't get on the boat? And where's she at? I was thinking, man, this girl. So I get in line, and I, my whole time I'm mad at her, but my heart's like, where's she at? You know, like, all right. So I see her way in the front. I said, look at this sucker right here. <laughs> she didn't even, she didn't even worry about me. She getting on the boat. We had to get on these little boats to go to the cruise ship. So she got on and I'm standing in the back and I'm mad. So finally I get on the ship and that's a big ship. I couldn't find it. We didn't see each other for hours. I didn't know where she was. She didn't know I went to the room. She wasn't there. So I said, I'm going to pool. So I came with the pool. And I'm going to work out. So I didn't see her till like, Maybe six hours later, I finally walk in the room and she's asleep. But I was so mad. We're on the honeymoon. I was so mad. I mean, but the truth is, I was so mad. I didn't want to see her. For those six hours, I didn't want to see her. I was mad at her. But there's towards the end. But when I walked in and I, I, okay, let me back up. I didn't want to see her. I was so mad. But I was, I was so, at first I was so in love with her. I couldn't wait to marry her and get on our honeymoon. Now we're on the honeymoon and I want to get off. To be being satisfied, I was right. How quick that changed, right? And I remember when I walked into that the room and I saw her asleep. I opened the door and my heart went, Ah, oh, there she is. Oh, she didn't leave me. She's still here. And I walked over. And she turned around and looked at me, and I lay down next to her and I said, and I'm sitting there thinking. My manhood is telling me better apologize for it. But the truth is inside I was happy to see her so late on, so I'm sorry, man. Sorry for getting mad. So I'm sorry too. I ain't gonna tell y'all what happened next. Sorry. Next. <laughs> but the buffet, the buffet, went to the buffet. <laughs> Sad. I forgot my whole point of the story. Praise the Lord. Satisfaction. God says, my relationship with you is like the relationship with your spouse. I realized that in the last three years that I have to pursue her and she has to pursue me for us to maintain the covenant that we've come into. If I stop pursuing her, that covenant slows down. She stopped pursuing me, that covenant slows. We have to pursue each other to keep that covenant going. We can never become satisfied within each other. The moment I I lose, the moment I stop being satisfied with her, I'm in danger. That's why I said satisfaction is a dangerous place. The moment I become satisfied, oh, she, oh, she's, I'm, 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 I'm over her. I'm not sad. She doesn't satisfy me anymore. What happens, honey? There's something easy walking right by. Are you hearing me? That's why. I have to never become satisfied. I have to pursue her. And she has to pursue me. It's the same thing with God. You pursue God. You hunger for Him. Because He's not looking to just satisfy you. He's looking to fill you up with something you've never been filled up before. Are you hearing me? God has more. But don't ever forget, true gratification, true gratitude never forgets what God has done. Are you grateful this morning? I don't know who you are and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But some of you are looking for satisfaction in your life. And you're, if you're looking for satisfaction, you're looking for the wrong thing. Stop looking to be satisfied. Because there's a lot of things in life that will temporarily satisfy you. But ultimately, those same things will destroy you and hinder you. Don't look for temporary satisfaction. Look for ultimate fulfillment. Stop looking for satisfaction. Look for fulfillment. And the only thing that can truly fulfill you is God. Will you stand with me this morning? 
where you sat this morning. Ushers, I want you to get ready. I want to pray for you. And we got a couple of announcements. We're going to pick up offering. We got a couple. I want to pray for you this morning. I, I really believe that God is bringing us to a place or desires for us to be at a place where he can fill us and not just satisfy us. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, would you stop right there where you are? Stop thinking it. Stop. I know some of you are battling. Some of you are struggling. And you're going, huh? I don't know whether to give up. I don't know. I want you to stop. Just stop right there. Just stop. Just pause. Put your life. Pause. Hit the pause button right there in your marriage, in your in, in your life, in your career. Just hit the pause button. But once I hit the pause button, step back and just look to God and say, God, and evaluate your life and say, Am I looking for satisfaction in these things? when I should be looking for fulfillment in God. Because if God fulfills you, the things that he's blessed you with will satisfy you. I'm going to say it again. If you're fulfilled in God, then you'll be satisfied with what he has blessed you with. When you're not filled with God, you're never satisfied with what you have. But when you're filled with God, you're satisfied with what you have, but yet you understand that God still has more for you. Are you hearing me? So be, be thankful for what's here. Desire fulfillment from God and understand that Him filling you, Him filling you, fulfilling you will lead you to the more that He has for you. Because God has more for you. Lift your hands right there. Your Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that we will not stay in satisfaction. That we will pursue more. The more in the fulfillment of God. I declare today, in the name of Jesus, that Father, you are moving us from a place of satisfaction to a place of fulfillment. I declare in the name of Jesus that, Lord, the spirit of satisfaction, I command it to come off of your people. That they will not be satisfied and settled, but they will, they will strive for more. You have more blessing for them, more for them to conquer, more for them to do. You have a calling on their life, a passion. Some of you have a calling on your life, but you have settled. You have a calling and a passion, but you've settled. I declare today that, you're, that you are becoming active again. You're coming out of being settled, out of being satisfied, and you're stepping into being fulfilled. Make this your prayer. Lord, fill me. Fill me, Father. Fill me. This is the end of the year. We're coming to the end of the year. This is my prayer. That next year will be a year of fulfillment. We're crossing over into fulfillment, fulfillment. That's what we're coming into. We're crossing over from 2015, 2015, 2016, crossing into fulfillment. See, we've been satisfied. 2015, we hit some areas that we were satisfied. We see some things that satisfied us, but, but sa that satisfaction isn't enough. Now we're moving into being fulfilled. We're being, moving to being from satisfaction to being filled and overfilled with God. And I declare that right now in your life. Lord, that they will be healed and fulfilled in the name of Jesus. How many receive that? Hallelujah. How many are blessed?